Back here on Hacker After Dark, 1010XL and 92.5 FM. We are certainly glad you are with us. The Jaguars have begun off-season conditioning under first-year head coach Doug Peterson. The draft is two and a half weeks away. And could Jacksonville go back to the University of Georgia and take somebody in the first round? Well, a guy that knows all about that played at the University of Georgia, was the first-round pick of the Jacksonville Jaguars, and he joins us here on Hacker After Dark. Of course, I'm talking about Marcus Stroud. Marcus, how are you, man? I'm doing well. How about yourself? Hey, Marcus, we are good. Uh, You have seen Trevon Walker play. Obviously, there's rumors out there Jacksonville very interested in him. What do you see, Marcus, when you see Trevon Walker, and why do you think he is really skyrocketing up the draft boards right now? Well, I mean, I've, I've of course been paying attention to Georgia football for a while, and 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 this is the guy who put in the work, and and if you could see throughout the season, he's just gotten better, gotten better, gotten better at his trade, and especially during those during the playoff run and. And um, during the big games during the season, that guy always showed up. So uh, that's one reason why he could be – that's why he's holding everybody's draft board as high as he is right now. Marcus, how do you feel like he fit in last year? I mean, you had so many good players on that defense from Jordan Davis, Devontae Wyatt, and Kobe Dean. You can go on down the line. Did Trevon Walker stand out to you at all last year in Georgia? And he did. He stood out because he was one of the guys I felt like he was um, one of those. You know, we used the heavy rotation last year, but he was one of those guys I felt that was always out there on the field. He was always – he he was. you would see him show up in the run game. You would see, see him show up in the pass game. So he, he was one of those guys that could do it all. And um, that's – like I said earlier, that's one of the reasons why he's high on everyone's draft board. Marcus, uh, again, Marcus Stroud here with us, former Jaguar, first-round draft pick, spent many really good years here in a Jaguar uniform. Marcus, Trevon Walker's getting a lot of talk. Also, Aiden Hutchinson from Michigan uh, is getting talk as well. Evan Neal from Alabama. Have you uh, paid attention to any of the other guys other than Walker that are maybe being linked to Jacksonville with that first overall pick? Yeah, I have been. Um... You know, to be honest, I, I think of all the guys you, you just named, he's the best. Um, I, I feel like he would be the best pick if that's the way you're going to go. Um, between him and Hutchinson, I like his game a little better than Hutchinson and, and not to be biased. But, of course, uh, if you saw Georgia play Michigan, uh, I, I I didn't re- remember seeing Hutchinson do too much that game. So, uh, you know, just based upon those two games – that that game with those two guys head to head, per se, you know, I feel like Trayvon had the better game and the better matchup, and I feel like coming into this NFL and in the division that the Jaguars are in, I feel like he'll be a better fit to what they're trying to do. You know, Marcus, I got to ask you. I'm sure you're still celebrating that Georgia national championship. What a run it was last year for Kirby Smart and the Dogs, but when you look on all these draft boards and you see Jordan Davis, Wyatt, Walker, Dean, Channing Tindall, Lewis Seen, all of these defensive guys that are going to be drafted probably in the top 100, I know Kirby's done a great job recruiting, but good grief, Marcus, they're going to have to replace a lot this year. I mean, what should the Georgia expectations be for the fan base coming in to defend their title here in 2022? Well, you know, we have to, you know, um, we have to have faith in Kirby and and and, and know that while these it's a lot of guys that you saw, and I think that's why they had such a heavy rotation. Kirby was smart enough to know that hey, these guys are going to be gone at some point, and we got to start um, doing something to retool and replace and have other guys and with some game time experience so they can get in here. And, and be ready to play and be available when we need them. And um, I think he's done a good job of doing that. And let's be honest, I've looked at the schedule so far. And, you know, we have, a we have based on paper right now, we have a schedule that's not as hard as uh, that it, 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 was, it was last year or in previous years. So hopefully that would be a chance to help us out and, and help the young guys get a chance to get exposure and get playing time and stuff like that. And hopefully 
all these recruiting and five star recruits that that that's been up there in the pipeline. Hopefully they're ready to get out and perform. Former Jaguar great, former Georgia Bulldog great, Marcus Stroud here with us on Hacker After Dark here on 1010XL and 92.5 FM. Marcus, let's get into the Jaguars. Uh, before we get in to what is going on now, let's reflect on last year. I haven't had a chance to speak with you uh, since the nonsense of the Urban Meyer tenure here, all 13 games of it. As a former Jaguar, a guy that was voted as one of the top 25 players to ever wear the uniform, Marcus, what did you make of what went on here last year? Um, I mean, it was a sad situation, you know, being a former player and, and having friends who played at other places, you know, it, it was kind of like we were the laughing stock for a second, you know. But um, it was one of those things where a lot of guys felt like they knew from the hiring, me included, that I, they didn't think it was going to work, and, and he just happened to prove us right. Did you see enough of Trevor Lawrence last year, Marcus? What was your impression of him, and how do you feel like he will uh, enter year number two now with Doug Peterson as his head coach? Um, I feel like Trevor Trevor has a great trajectory. Uh, you know, we saw flashes of, of him doing good things last year, but I think the most important thing about it is he showed what type of leader he was, and um, and to be able to be able to come to work and, and, and withstand all that turmoil on the on the team that wasn't playing as good and, and still be, you know, positive and go out there and, and, and do that. And when your head coach is acting up and stuff like that, that just shows that um, they did a good job with, with, with drafting him. And he, he's going to have a bright future here as long as they get some players around them to um, go out and first protect them and then go out and, and make plays. And I think that, um, the Jazz did a good job of acquiring players this offseason to, to get them put up in that situation. A couple of more for former Jaguar great Marcus Stroud here with us on Hacker After Dark on 1010XL. Marcus, I want to get to the free agent hall in a moment, but let's talk about Doug Peterson. You played the game at a very high level for many years, a terrific career both here in Jacksonville and when you went to Buffalo. Uh, your thoughts on hiring a guy that brings a Lombardi trophy with him? When he walks into that locker room, he has a Super Bowl ring on his finger. What does that do to the players in the locker room, knowing you've hired a guy that has been to the mountaintop? Well, it just, first off, it shows the commitment that you guys are serious about winning. So anytime that you have put people in management or upstairs above you that are serious about winning, you go out there and you, you want to go out there and play a little better and give it that extra extra mile because you know that you have people out there that's like-minded and, and they have the same goals and, and stuff that you're trying to reach to. And plus, when you have a guy that walks in with a Super Bowl ring already, he instantly brings credibility because he knows what it looks like. He knows what a Super Bowl caliber team looks like, the things you should do, and how to prepare to, to get in those situations. Marcus, you mentioned the new players that came in this offseason – Let's talk about that free agent class. They spent a lot of money on the likes of Brandon Scherf and Christian Kirk and Evan Ingram and, and certainly Ola Kuhn from from Atlanta, the leading tackler in the NFL last year. What did you make of the amount of money that they spent and the guys that they were able to bring in? I mean, um, it, it's more about the guys that they bought in than about the amount of money that they spent. You know, at the end of the day, that's why you have all this salary cap and all that stuff. So the money's going to be there to be spent. So uh, somebody's going to do it. But the, those guys that they did spend the money on, they spent money on good quality guys, you know, and they all fit, filled positions and needs that needed to be filled. You got me? You know, that you, you bought in a good tight end. You bought in a, a all-pro guard to – to help solidify your offensive line and to help protect that great investment that you have back there, Trevor Lawrence. So, I, I, and, and you gave him some more weapons on offense and you've added some more pieces to the defensive line to help solidify your defense. So, I think they're making, they're, they addressed a bunch of needs that they made, that, that they have. And look, you still have a, a draft coming forward. 
Final moments here with Marcus Stroud. Marcus, they've won 10 football games in the last three years, and this is a very young football team. A lot of these guys, once they've gotten into the NFL, have known nothing but losing, quite frankly. Is that going to be hard to, I guess, change that mindset? I mean, when you lose every Sunday, does that become a problem mentally or now with a new staff, a new direction? To Can the young guys get over that pretty quick? Absolutely. I mean, um, at the end of the day, if, if, if you don't like doing something, you have to do something to change it. So uh, even though these guys are getting paid, and, and like you said, a lot of these guys come from winning programs in college, nobody wants to go out and lose. So if they're going to definitely go out there and try to do things to get better and, and to go out and play. He's one of the best defensive players to ever put on a Jaguar uniform, Marcus Stroud. Marcus, let Jaguar fans, man, know what you're up to these days. Are you still uh, up in the state of Georgia? I think last time we talked, you were uh, helping out with uh, some high school football coaching. Yeah, I was, but no, I um, actually moved back to Jacksonville, and um, I'm just, you know, sitting back trying to make a few things happen, and, and that's about it. Well, good deal, Marcus. We certainly appreciate you joining us, man. Now that you're back locally, we'll have to do this a little more often. Thank you for the time. And uh, as the season gets closer, man, we'll dial your phone again and uh, we'll talk some Jaguar football with you. Thank you, Marcus. Uh, you're welcome.